How are you, student nurses? So, we will now discuss about dosage calculations. Okay, so this is part one of our lecture. Bakit nga ba tayo kailangan matuto with regards to dosage calculations? Because sometimes yung available dose is frequently not the dose needed. Ang big sabihin nito yung in order ng doctor, hindi siya yung stock on hand natin. Hindi siya yung available na stock na meron tayo. Okay? Sa pharmacy or sa hospital man kaya. And then sometimes din, kailangan natin mag convert ng units because hindi magkaparehas yung unit na in order ng doctor doon sa unit na available available na stock natin and of course uh, this is to ensure that the right patient is getting the right dosage remember yung mga factors affecting our drug effects you have your weight you have your age kasama rin siya sa lifespan considerations natin so May mga patient na kailangan talagang individualize yung dosing. Like for example, baby, pediatric patient, or older adult patients. Okay? Kailangan masigurado natin na hindi under dosage or over dosage yung mabibigay natin sa patient natin. Okay? Kanino nga bang responsibility ang dosage calculations? Number one, of course, the prescriber. Kung sino yung nagpre-prescribe no gamot. Of course, dapat um, makalculate din yan. Especially yung mga pediatric patients, dapat yung mga doctors, sila talaga yung nagka-calculate nun. Okay? And then, the pharmacist, who dispenses the drug. So, sa mga hospital kasi, may mga pharmacist na na sila na yung nagpre-prepare ng medications. Like, for example, yung mga antibiotics natin, yung ibang high-alert drugs natin, sila na yung uh, nagpre-prepare noon, sila na yung nagka-calculate. So, ang magiging trabaho na lang ng nurses is i-administer yung uh, gamot na na-prepare from the pharmacy. But, it doesn't mean na kapag prepare na ng pharmacy, hindi na rin natin i-double-check. Kailangan i-double-check pa rin natin. Remember, your medication safety, ang nurses, ang last check sa medication kasi tayo yung mag administer ng gamot. Okay? And of course, the last one, kaninong responsibility? The nurse. Because the nurse is the one who will administer the drug. So, yan. Kung iniisip ninyo, nag-nursing kayo kasi ayaw nyo ng mathematics, but unfortunately, mathematics is all around us. Mathematics is forever. Even sa nursing. So, kapag nag-work na kayo as a nurse, dapat uh, bihasa rin kayo sa dosage calculations. Okay? Especially when you are working in big hospitals. Or even at home. ba? Minsan kayo talaga yung aasahan ng family members ninyo. So, dapat matutunan nyo ito. Wala tayong takas sa mathematics because it is our part of our everyday life. Okay? We have systems of measurement. You have your metric system. So, itong metric system, ito yung mga usual na ginagamit natin. You have your micrograms, you have your milligrams, grams, kilograms, and kapag volume, you have your ml and your liters. Okay? Dapat ma-memorize nyo itong conversion na ito kasi ito yung lagi nating ma-encounter. We also have uh, household measurement. So, itong household measurement, kapag ang patient is madi-discharge na siya or wala silang medication cup or wala silang syringe para sa oral medications, so, pwede silang gumamit ng teaspoon at saka tablespoon. Ang 1 teaspoon, equivalent siya sa 5 ml or 16 drops. Ang 1 tablespoon naman is equivalent to 3 teaspoon or that is 15 ml. But, itong sa drops... Um, may mga dropper naman yung mga gamot na para sa mga infant, okay? sa mga babies. If napansin ninyo, may dropper yung, yung mga syrup at saka suspension nila. Kasi nga, small dosage lang yung kailangan nila. Okay? So, yan naman sa household system. We also have other systems of measurement. You have your milli equivalent. So, ginagamit ito siya sa mga electrolytes such as your sodium, your potassium, and sodium bicarbonate. 
So, minsan makita ninyo, potassium chloride, 40 milli equivalent. Makita nyo yung MEQ, milli equivalent yung ibig sabihin yan. And then, you also have your unit. So, usually, ginagamit siya sa mga insulin, heparin, so, mga, parang mga hormones, ganyan. Example is 10 units insulin or 5,000 units of heparin. Okay? So, yan siya. Uh, minsan naman, gumagamit tayo ng IU. Ano naman itong IU? Pasensya na, hirap magsulat. Uh, ginagamit to usually sa mga vitamins. Okay? Vitamin. Sa mga vitamins naman nito. IU. Kung familiar kayo sa Myra E, Myra E, 400 IU. Nang ibig sabihin ng IU, that is international unit. Again, Myra E, 400 IU. International unit. Or meron din yung vitamin D, vitamin D3, 5,000 international unit. Ganyan. Okay? So, yan ha? Yan yung mga examples ng unit of measurement natin. And then, before tayo mag-proceed sa dosage calculations, gusto ko muna i-orient kayo sa drug label. Okay? So, may tinatawag tayong dosage strength. Ano itong dosage strength na to? Yung dosage strength is the amount of drug present per tablet, capsule, or other form. So, ibig sabihin nito, kapag nakita ninyo nakalagay doon is 2.5 mg, tapos may 30 tablets, ibig sabihin nitong 30 tablets, merong 30 tablets sa isang container or isang packet or isang pack ng gamot. Then, ang 2.5 mg, yan naman yung unit dose. Okay? Ibig sabihin, in one tablet here, meron kang 2.5 mg na Provera. So, magiging dosage strength natin is 2.5 mg per 1 tablet. Okay? So, minsan hindi na sinusulat yung 1, 2.5 mg per tab na lang yung nakasulat. Okay? So, yan siya. Another example is your diltiazem. So, alam nyo naman na yung trade name at saka generic name. Tapos na natin to madiscuss sa drug information. So, ang unit dose ng giltiazem is 120 mg. Then, in one bottle, meron tayong 100 tablets. So, ano yung dosage strength natin? You have 120 mg per tab. Okay? Per tab. Big sabihin, in one tablet, meron tayong 120 mg ng Deal, thiazem, or cardizem. Okay? So, yan naman siya. Another example is you have your cephalexin. So, dito usually nagkakamali yung mga students natin. Kasi, um, sa calculation, ang uh, nakikita nilang volume is this 200 ml. But, this is wrong. Kasi, itong 200 ml is the total volume of your one bottle. Okay? So, ano ba yung gagamitin na unit dose is ito mismo. Ito siya. Okay? Yung 250 mg per 5 ml. Ibig sabihin, in every 5 ml of the suspension, meron tayong 250 mg of cephalexin. So, kapag gagamit na tayo ng dosage calculation, ang stock on hand natin will be 250 mg per 5 ml. Nakasulat naman siya dito. If you can see here, the directions and storage, makita nyo dito to the pharmacist. So, to the pharmacist, when prepared as directed, each 5 ml teaspoonful contains cephalexin monohydrate equivalent to 250 mg cephalexin. So, ibig sabihin, in every 5 ml, meron tayong 250 mg of cephalexin. So, yan siya ha. Again, Kapag stock on hand natin, ito sila ang gagamitin. Itong mga unit dosage natin. So, please do remember, wag nyo yan kakalimutan para hindi kayo magkamali sa drug calculations natin. So, again, itong 200 ml is the total volume of your one bottle or one container. Okay? So, your methods for calculation, we have four. You have your basic formula, your ratio and proportion, 
your fractional equation and your dimensional analysis. So, we discuss natin ito one by one. Then, for individualized dosing, you have your body weight and body surface area. Bakit kailangan pa ng individualized dosing? Remember, uh, yung mga pediatric patients natin, uh, iba yung dosage nila sa adult dose. Tapos, may mga patients din tayo na uh, low ang body weight niya compared sa normal adult weight. Then, meron din yung mga patients na obese. Okay? So, overweight naman sila or mas mataas yung body weight nila compared sa uh, average na adult weight. Or, kinikailangan din natin yung body weight sa mga gamot na for cancer patients or sa mga critically ill patients, ganyan. Okay? So, ito naman ang purpose ng body weight at saka body surface area. But most probably, your body surface area, ito siya usually ginagamit sa pediatric dosages. Okay? But don't worry, usually, sa pediatric dosages, ang doctor usually yung nagko-compute. But, if the doctor is busy, at hindi niya ito na compute, you will be the one to compute the dosage. Kasi ikaw yung mag administer ng medication. And of course, hindi ibig sabihin na yung doctor na yung nag-compute, hindi mo na rin siya i-double check. Okay? Still, we are going to compute the dosage that we are going to give to the patient for the sake of medication safety para ma-avoid natin ang error. So, I hope that you understood our lecture. Uh, please do ask questions. I know you have confusions. Hindi madaling intindihin itong dosage calculations, lalo na sa mga iniisip na nahihirapan sa math when in fact, math, kailangan lang is practice. Okay? So, please, wala, wala man lang nag ask ng question, wala man lang nag raise ng question, I don't know how to make you more interactive in our class. Okay? Um, again, if uh, you have any questions, please type it in the comment section or post it in our Google Classroom or in our FB group. Please watch the part 2 uh, for the continuation of our lecture. So, thank you for listening and good luck.